Come on, look at that. Welcome to the world of suck. <laughs> you ready to run this crocket? I'm ready to run it. Check it! Look at that. Oh, that's just ugly. CNC work. And yes, it's expensive. Some things that are super. Boise, Idaho, Tactical Solutions. Check it out. There's a solid block 4140 steel being milled into what's going to be the upper, that is the slide on a Tactical Solutions TSG 22. The heart and soul of Tactical Solutions here in Boise, Idaho. Hello world, TMP, this is Ned Fancy. Another fun factory tour coming your way. We'll talk about the TSG 22, the 1022 products, the pack like, the trail like, uh, their AR 15 uppers and 22 long rifle. Lots to go. Say hello to co host, Mr. PFI. What's up, Team Pierce? How you doing, man? Excellent. How was lunch? It was awesome. Decent, huh? Good Mexican food. Good. It was good. It was excellent. How was the drifting in the rental, uh, what was it? Impala, Impala. right? Impala. It was subpar. I think you could have done better. <laughs> I'm always working on it, man. You're up next. <laughs> Am I next? Yeah, you want All to do right. it next? It's my turn? Okay. That's going to be kind of like a tradition. We come to a factory tour, we this got, time in Boise, we Idaho. We got to drift. We got to drift the rental car. <laughs> I started with the Arsenal booth review. I didn't get, or not booth, but factory visit in yeah. Vegas. I didn't get it on camera, though. Well, that doesn't count. We got it on camera this time. Yep, we did. I'll probably post that on Barry's channel. That would be cool. Sick. Awesome. All right. Uh, so, uh, so that's PFI Dude. Thanks for making time. We flew yeah. uh, over to Boise to do this review. Say hello to co-CEO Tactical Solutions, Boise, Idaho, Mr. Keith. Hey, how you going? How are you doing? Doing all right. This cat is cool. <laughs> cool. We had a great time with him, uh, talking to him about everything about Tactical Solutions. We got into the nuts and bolts of what you're doing oh, here, yeah. right? And then uh, talk a little bit about Iron Man competition or anything. Mm -hmm. Yep. Very a lot cool. of fun doing the Iron Man. Very cool event to do. Yeah, that just sounds like an absolute riot. It will be. Maybe we'll do that on camera one time. That would be fun. Come yeah. do a whole deal. You're going to probably have to wear a completely pink outfit if you run it, though. I'm on. You're, you're so secure in your manhood. That's what guys like about that. <laughs> that you're not threatened by it at yeah, all. Not one bit. Rocking a Benchmade hat in Tactical Solutions. That's going over good. Check out mine. Uh huh. Rocking their Tactical Solutions hat. It's a very cool hat. It's like comes pretty worn. It's like it's been around the block a bit. You guys Straight go for it? the publicly challenged people as well. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, that happens sometimes. We don't care. This is Joe. Hey, hey Joe. Thanks for being on camera. He's been helping us off camera as we get ready for the factory tour. We're gonna do a really quick shop run through. Show you some of the. Uh, first engineers, there's Brian. Brian, what's up? What? Yeah. <laughs> Massively cool people here at Taxol. Uh, we'll show you the raw materials, how they're transformed into the yeah. products, and what do you say, PFI? We walk afterwards and we show them. Heck yeah, the let's go check product. out the, the final product. And then better yet, why don't we go shoot the final yeah. product? Yeah, they're much better when you can shoot them. Yeah, so that's the game plan. Don't know how long the video will go, how many parts it will go, I can't promise it. Um, let's start off in the shop, Keith, what do you say? Yeah. Do it. Uh, show us, by the way, how the Glock slides, what we just showed here, start out. So here's the base material, starts out 12 foot bar, 4140, 
We heat treat it before we machine it so it doesn't warp at all after the process. Um, when you come over. Nice, look at that. So you were telling me off camera 80% of that's going to go bye bye. Yeah, at least 80% of it's going off. Um, no other way to do it though that's with the size of that slide. Right. And we wanted to do it in steel. I mean, people have done it differently, other materials. People said it couldn't be done in steel, we did it. And it turns out pretty darn light too after it's all done, right? Yeah, it's a little bit lighter than your standard Glock slide, your center fire, but it's still heavier than aluminum slide. Yeah. Anything else that's already out there, trying to get that realistic feel for training. Mm -hmm. Awesome. How often do you have to change your tool heads out when you're milling that? Pretty often. Um, we're getting a couple runs of parts through. Um, and those, those tool heads are only like five bucks a pop, right? <laughs> <laughs> that is because you eat something off camera, probably. No, they're expensive, I'm kidding. Yeah. Way expensive. Yeah, we change cutters quite a bit. Everything running is carbide tooling. Yeah, you guys are a huge. Mi what I'm getting here is just like a huge milling operation. That's oh, yeah. what's going on here. There you go. That's about mid process on the slide for the TSG 22. It's got a couple more operations to go. You can see how the ejection port is milled out right there. Wow. Nothing's milled out underneath. Cool. You do that in your shop with a Dremel too, right? I do in a hand drill. Save so much money. I do. It takes me a little longer, but and this is what's coming off the machine. There you go. And that's not final finish too on the inside. Mm -hmm. That's just the, the rough cut, and then they'll finish machine that. Cool. That's kind of an expensive operation, I'm thinking. And the reason I'm bringing this up too is to give you a chance to kind of explain why the pricing levels are set the way they are at Taxol. You know, it really is. It's just. You know, we could take things overseas, do things differently, probably do a little less expensive. But, you know, we want to do things here in the United States, how we've, how we've made all our products, make everything here out of Boise. We're proud of that. Yeah, 100 I think it's one of the American features. Dudes. So you guys that dig the American-made stuff? Right here. Exactly. Look at Tax Hall. And we control the quality. When it's all done in-house, we know what it's going to be like when it's done. A couple of other guys we've done, uh, well, we've done some booth reviews, we've mm -hmm. done some factory visits, and we do hear when they start farming it out to other vendors, it seems like almost inevitably there's quality problems. Yeah. It, whatever it is, milling, finishing, and they're like, you know what, this knife manufacturer's tell me that too. Yeah. We're yep. going to bring it in-house and control yeah. everything. And that's something we've been big on from the start, is we really want to do as much as possible here. Right. You know, we want our names on this product. Yeah. We want to be proud of it. Right. All right, we're going to show you the finished product on that real quick, guys. Let's do a quick flyby, Keith, on some other tables that you have. Over here you have pack light or trail light upper? Yeah, trail light barrels in process. At this point, they've already had a couple of lathe operations. They've been drilled out. Everything's turned concentric. Right. Rocking the Creon 2 is lighting again. It does good. Uh, and what was the big word I wanted to roll in on camera? Is concentricity or something? Concentricity. Yeah, we did it. There you go. <laughs> We're done here. Well, let's, let's go, go shooting. <laughs> We're done. Uh, okay, so by the way, if you guys don't know it already, I'm huge fans of the Pack Light Trail Light. Just yeah. love it. I've always loved it. That's why we traveled all the way here. PFI yeah. 2 is also a big fan. Big time. Pretty much everything you do. Yeah. Great. We love I it. I love that. Yeah. Can we go peek at that over there? The yeah. guys would really like to see that, I think. There's your M4 barrels, right? Yeah, we have the M4 style for the AR conversion. They see all steel barrel, 4140 again. Button rifled, 1 in 16 twist. Makes a great thing for a dedicated upper. Don't have to worry about the lead buildup in your gas port. Yeah. Don't have to worry about cleaning out. Um, that was really cool. Big deal with some of the other conversions, the adapters. As soon as they leave that adapter, they're hitting the rifling. There's no real throat. You tend to get a little bit of lead buildup. Right. You don't have that problem when you have a dedicated barrel. Yeah. Uh, guys in the past may note that I'm not a super fan of the M4 profile barrel in 223556. Mm -hmm. And apparently the U.S. Army isn't either since they just right. changed the profile yep. on it for uh, better performance and extended fire and full auto type stuff. In a 22 long rifle, it makes no difference whatsoever. You're never gonna heat this up enough You'll to make never. a difference. Yeah, you don't have velocity coming out of that. That is a, that is a nice piece of uh, engineering. We checked really? that out on yeah. camera. As cool as that is, I will tell you, and uh, PFI, I know you're in agreement, we like this one better. Yeah. This is also for an AR-15, guys. AR conversion, once again, 1 in 16 twist, button rifle, dedicated 22 long rifle barrel. But the difference with this one is, 
6061T6 aluminum barrel with the 4140 steel shroud. And like all our barrels for the AR conversion comes threaded half by 28, putting your 22 long rifle suppressor on, muzzle brakes, anything like that, thread right on. That's your LT barrel then? That is. Cool. And uh, oh, by the way, PFI's got our catalog here. Look at this. This is a smoking catalog. Nice catalog. Well done. Here's why. There's the weights right there so you can see them. So this is what we're looking at, the AR-22 LT, it actually comes in an upper, right? It does, it's a complete upper. Co complete upper, we're just looking at the barrel right now, guys, so don't think you can just get the barrel. 16 and, a half out, 16 and a half inches, 46 ounces. And then the steel one we just looked at, the AR-22 M4, a lot heavier at 63 ounces, but the whole POU on that, and by POU I mean philosophy, is uh, you want the gun to weigh similar to their platform. Yeah, that's what the M4 style is really to, to mimic the center fire AR upper. Right. For the LT, we had to apply the same technology we've done with the pack lights and the trail lights, 10 by 2 barrels, bring that lighter barrel in there. You know, a lot of people like it for their kids that they're shooting. They have a hard time supporting a heavier barrel. Or PFI, because his upper I body have a strength really is really tough time. It's bad. Weight. It's yeah. really bad. I mean, sometimes we're like, he always wants to rest his guns when he's shooting at 200 yards. Hurts. A lot of he brings out the shooting sticks at 200 yards. <laughs> oh, here comes an inset. Oh, you and better like, put it in. Shoot sticks. It's actually me that you does it. You better put in all the references <laughs> to the shooting sticks, not just the one time I used them. No, I'm just kidding, man. It was usually me that was doing it before we got uh, the, oh, yeah. the barricade at 200 yeah. yards. Yeah. Uh, although you did that one sledgehammer run, you were hitting time. offhand with yeah. 200 yards that yeah. one time. Yeah. The rest of the times you did, you absolutely failed it. Yeah. I'm just saying. Here we go. <laughs> What's that one, too? That's trail light barrel, that's a five and a half inch. Yep. Basically that one looks to have all its machine ops. It's gonna be fluted. Okay, that's that what they're being Joe. Be if yeah. I had my choice, you guys do a five and a half inch barrel for the trail light, but you don't do it for you either go six with uh, the, the Ruger, right? We do with the brown the browning procs, we did them later and we just can't we followed Brownie's convention. Oh, I see. Where with the Ruger pistols, we went with the, uh, originally did a three, didn't sell as well, so we eventually just took it out of the lineup. Cool. But we went to a four and a half, four and a half tends to work great. I bet you that's your best seller animals. too, isn't it? It is, by far. <laughs> yeah, that's what I have. I, and we're gonna be shooting those later. What would you guys think this turns into? These blanks right here, TMPers. PFI and I both guessed on it, we were wrong. We were wrong. Keith, what's that turn into? This will turn into the barrel for the TSG-22 conversion. Here's one, it hasn't quite finished all its machining Check up. That it's out. getting close. I just finished that one by hand. <laughs> With your dribble pull yeah. while we were talking? And my hand drill, I thought. Now we'll get yeah. four barrels out of this. But, yeah, you're gonna uh, pull several out. Uh -huh. Yeah. That shows you how much uh, material's coming off. Mm -hmm. uh, of course, that's no different than other milling, other milling operations out there we know. I just think it's amazing how much material coming off. Here's some 1022 barrels, I bet. Yo? Yes. Yes. Guess that one, right? There you go. About time. About time is and right. They could also be made uh, for the uh, AR LT or the AR oh, okay. AR so, Same six thousand series aluminum, right? Yep. And Keith, you were saying that the, the and this was I kind of knew it, but I forgot it and relearned it again with you. You said the six thousand series takes a finish differently than it, the seven thousand. It does. It's got a lower zinc content, tends to anodize a little better. We can get those vibrant colors out of there. Um, so that's part of the reason why we use 6000 series and I don't want to mix lots between different aluminum for exactly. the same product and then get a bunch of red barrels that look pink, something like that. And you're also throwing in a, a steel insert, so, it, and actually this is no more than a support material. It, it really is, it's yeah. Not a fun, it's not a um, load bearing member, right. so to speak. I you know don't know why he's got an issue with pink barrels, but anyway, let's keep going. <laughs> Pink barrel would be cool, PFI. I think so. I'll, I'll look into that. Are you going to flute it and have it silver on the side or just solid what, what's pink? What's the deal with flutes? Huh? Flutey. I kind of like the solid pink idea myself. Yeah, me too. I like I mean, pink. if you're going to go pink, go bold. Bold. Pink. Bold. Like, be proud of it. Like pink crayon? Embrace it. <laughs> you wear pink, embrace it. There's nothing wrong with it. Doesn't make you any no. less of a man. No, not at all. All right. Anything well, else here in the shop you want to talk about, dude? Oh, well. Anywhere else you want to roll? Uh, I don't want to bore you guys with all the technicalities of tactical solutions. Let me just say this though: this is uh, this operation runs 24/7 most days, not all days. Yeah, we run 24 hours, five days a week, and we run seven days a week on at least a day in a swing shift. Roger that. Wow. Um, 
And what we got during our lunch conversation is uh, they're expanding. This oh, facility, yeah. it, they've kind of outgrown this facility. You're probably going to a new place soon. Yeah, our plan is within a year to move to a bigger facility. Yeah. Uh, guys, if you ever order something from Tactical Solutions or, you know, preferred dealers in the Nut and Fancy project, <laughs> and, it, and it's back order, be patient. You got, a reason I'm talking about this is letting them know you're doing everything you can to Oh yeah, build up product. And running 24 hours a day is a newer thing. We just started that the first year just to keep up with demand, keep right. products moving. And and part of that effort is that Joe normally works four hours a day, and he's been putting in six <laughs> six whole hours a day. And, and everyone else is doing tens, but Joe's yeah, doing sixes. Yeah. Got the cotton in the back. And, you know, we're hoping to get him up to seven within a few weeks. <laughs> yeah, we're working. You put him to seven now, and he's going to be curled up in the corner sucking his oh, thumb. Yeah. That doesn't work. You gotta, no. yeah, work them up. Place to harassment, it. I'll probably claim. Yeah, PFI. What else are we missing back here, dude? I don't know. I. Let's, you wanna go I look wanna at guns? I want to see some finished stuff. You know what? We gotta check out. Uh oh. Is there awesomely cool dog? Oh yeah. <laughs> Where is that dog? Yeah, we gotta see the dog. Let's go see the I've dog. I've heard a lot about this dog. It's almost as if, you know, they knew I was a dog lover. Yeah, maybe. There's no way they set this Supposedly, up. Supposedly, this dog's been here for like months. <laughs> months. By the way, Tactical Solutions also mills parts for other manufacturers. That's kind of how they pay, pay the bills as well. And these are some very precise parts they have on contract. Keith off camera is telling me that they have to be milled within like, I mean really precise, one inch tolerances. <laughs> no, what was this like? We've got a bearing surface in here that runs within two tenths of an inch. Actually, two tenths of a, a thousandth, I'm going to Yeah, two thousandths, right? <laughs> two tenths of a thousand. Oh, two tenths of a thousand. Wow. Okay, now that's precise. Yeah, that's amazing. And those go to skateboard bearings, right? Yeah. Longboard. <laughs> Longboard. <laughs> Joe, is it about time you take a break or something? You're okay, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Gotta get some coffee, you know. Okay, let us know if we're tucking you out, bro. Like what? Oh, hold on. We gotta do a knife check. Before we get to the dock, we're doing a knife check. All right, here we go. PFI, you're up. Knife check. I don't even know what I'm carrying, though. That's because I loaded to you. You did. Nice it's a loner. It. That's the <laughs> American new model, Cold Steel American Lawman, which is a total win. Oh, yes. And guys will be happy to know that I totally sanded under the clip. Uh-huh. Guys in the comments are like, that fancy, why are you going to all that trouble epoxying your knives? Just sand under the clip. Yeah. I did it. It does work. Kind of. However, it's not as cool. No. I don't like it as cool. much. I like my mod better. Yeah. Sorry. The JB Weld mod. We'll be talking about that gun. I just had a huge deja vu moment right there. Cool. <laughs> Keith. Okay, and this was not set up. Keith is always, always carrying this stuff, right? Yeah, I'm always carrying these couple knives. Okay, go ahead. Uh, we got the Hogue knife. That's a nice the knife. One. I still love the coloration. I looked on that at knife. that at lunch and I was very impressed. And he had it on his person already. <laughs> that is a really cool knife. And you said 154 cm? It is. Cool. Is that you dremeling again? Sorry, I'm hungry. <laughs> it's my stomach. Dude. All right, that's a beautiful blade. It doesn't yeah. have steel liners in it. Let's go in here. Where we are yeah. out there. Maybe the break room's quieter. Okay, so that's knife number one. I don't know the model on that, guys. So that's, I think that's the EXO one. Cool I'm impressed with it, though. Look that's at now, that. Now, that is a stonewash finish right there. And that's actually their patented G10. They call it the Damascus. It's got that Damascus look about it's it. It's gorgeous. I love it. Way good. Love it. Okay. Oh, show them the lock on that. Two key. It's got a button lock. Finger ridges Pretty sweet on top. as that wears in. That, that lock just gets tighter. Excellent. The only thing I would say on that, it's kind of a thick knife. A little bit. It is. It yeah. carries well, though. I don't really notice it's right. a thick knife. Okay. Um, Usually carry at least the second one. They've got Almar mini sear. There you go. Nice. I love Almar knives. They're a little bit pricey for what you're getting though because of the name. That's a nice knife though. They are pricey, but Saber it's brown. quality. Yeah, way good quality. Excellent. So that's second knife, and then he's got a third, his most well, used. Well, he's got the most used one. Knox. <laughs> Uh, Victorinox, uh, I forget the model, but it's one that has the pin in it and also the multi-function uh, driver bit right there. Okay, you're scoring a big win. You got three knives. Three oh, yeah. knives. All right, Joe, did you know you were going to get knife checked? No, I did not. They totally caught you off guard. Totally did. But I was, you're up, I was buddy. already prepared. You're up. Okay, lay it, lay it. Let's see what you got. Oh, tenacious, bro. 
Am I right? Spider coat tenacious. Well done. And it's been used. Do you like is. it? I like it a lot. It's a good knife for the money. Use it almost every day. Yeah. Excellent. Uh, any other blades? Not on me. That's okay. It's still a <laughs> Okay, film me. I'll show the crew what I got. How much time do we have? I don't know. I'll make it quick. Here we go. Number one. Lone Wolf. Harzy T2. Excellent. Previously reviewed the Net Fancy Project. No longer available in this form. Bitchmade is coming out with some variations. Very similar knives. Different names. CPMS. S30V steel. Okay, that's knife number one. And then the old standby, which I use all the time. That's a Delica and Brown full flat ground. Most awesome. Nice. There you have it. That's a nice for okay. the project today. All right. Knife check complete. Back to guns. Back to dog. Back to dog. Yeah. 22 minutes in the video, and we haven't even really seen their products yet in finished form. Hey, buddy. This is Yeti. He is a great Pyrenees. There's his owner right there. Yeah, he's 10 months old. He's 10 months old yeah, right he's now? He's been here since he's eight weeks old. Oh, so. look at him. He's a sweet dog. Yeah, he's kind of the shop oh, mascot. Yes, he is. You guys just scored huge with his shop <laughs> mascot. You are such a sweet boy. Yes, you are. He's smelling alley, too. Either that or he just digs the crotch. I can't really tell. Yeah, I think he actually digs the crotch. He's like, dude, we could really go down a bad path right here. So let me... He's got a leg hound in him. <laughs> leg hound. I was telling these guys when we first saw Yeti, I was like, I don't know what it is, but every time we see a shop mascot, especially the large breed dogs, I turn around for two seconds and they've mounted PFI, dude. <laughs> You didn't hear that? That's even better. <laughs> You'll see it on the video. Look at this dude's tats. Tell us about your tats, man. I'll uh, just uh, hodgepodge stuff. So You do them in your basement yourself, right? Uh, you know, I go to parties and I wake up the next day and I have a bunch of new ta uh, tattoos. So um, <laughs> that's usually how it works. Awesome. Tell the world your name, too. My name is Daniel. Daniel. And, and you and I have talked on, on the phone a lot, actually. Yes. Yeah. In fact, this is a factory visit that we've been trying to put together for probably, what would you say, eight months? Yeah, at least uh, I know it really started forming in November. Right. So, yeah. And then I mentioned, I talked to you guys, I think, shot in 2010. We just weren't able to hook up. So we hooked up now, though, brother. We are here. We are here. Is that the cool stock or what, PFI? Cool dog. Really mellow. What kind of, he's <laughs> going crotch on PFI. <laughs> yes, there's just a little bit of urine in there. That's all. <laughs> of course you're attracted to that. <laughs> That's too funny. Oh, I'll edit that out. Actually, I won't at all. <laughs> all right. Cool. All right. On we go. We to get out. All right, shop visit complete to the heart and soul of Tactical okay. Solutions, the guns. Let's check out what these things look like after they're finished. Should we say hello to the sales staff first? Absolutely. All right, sales staff, hello from the Net and Fancy Project. Hi. Hey. There's Amy, Andrea. If you call Tactical Solutions, these are the folks you're going to talk to. Am I right? Yep. How's sales going? Awesome. <laughs> Look, Busy. Hey, as I say that, the phone rings. <laughs> Are you guys ready to be superstars um, on the internet? Absolutely. Let me. You want me to kind of brief you on the perks and everything? Sure. Okay, first off, you're going to get like your choice of tables in any restaurant. Um, okay. <laughs> Done. Food's my thing. Actually so not. Awesome. You're not going to get okay, that. No. Okay. Uh, I was confused. Oh, the pay. The pay is really good. You're going to be making <laughs> Tell my boss. tons of money. Okay. Uh, actually, I don't. No. There's no pay at all, no, actually. I, I was wrong. I was wrong. You're going to get recognized wherever you go. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Are you good with that? Totally. Yeah, yeah it's way good. Yeah, actually, yeah, you're not going to get rid of You won't. That's cool. There's really no perks at all, awesome. except the stalkers. <laughs> <laughs> and they're fun sometimes. Yeah, the stalkers, whatever. Yeah. Depends on what you do with them. Yeah. Uh, yeah, we yes, do, actually. We do. Klingons. Yeah, we got them. So this awesome. is Amy. Uh, so sales are cranking. Sales are cranking. Good times. Good it's times. crazy, so that's good. Okay, they might crank a little faster. Yeah, hopefully. After this, uh, because... That's some neat stuff. Cool now that stuff. everybody's aware of it. And uh, MSRP. Huh? Cool stuff. We dig it. Okay, when the phone rings here, so uh, people can just call in and order direct from you if they Absolutely. want to. Yep, and we also sell to dealers, so they can call their local dealer and have them right. set up. There's going to be a little bit of price difference, though, of course, right, because you take care of your dealers. That's that way with everybody. Yep. Yeah. We support our dealers because without the dealers, this place goes out of business. Yep. Dude, there's a sign. They do have a sign. Yeah, that's cool. They don't want to have one outside. <laughs> Seriously, Keith, no sign outside. Yeah, we're kind of undercover here in the Brady Bunch house. <laughs> what were you saying? I missed it. I said the only sign we have says no visitors, so. <laughs> it does. Look. She's not kidding. We'll get to the guns. Relax, guys. 
No visitors. Due to insurance purposes. They had to get a waiver that started last year for us. All right, nice meeting you guys. Nice to meet you too. Great personalities. Andrea, thank you so much for having no us. Very cool. This guy handles customer service back there, so if you call and have a customer service issue, he'll field that call, get you to the right person. And now we come into the inner sanctum. Yes. Guns, guns, guns. Keith, what you got to show us, dude? Got all sorts of stuff here in the cell. Let me see, what's my time? We probably got 27. Yeah, I think we got time. Yeah. We'll do like a 10 minute through, yeah. bust through on the guns. Then we'll go out and get some more of them when we get to shoot them. I bet you it starts raining, Joe, when we go out there. It's looking like it. Uh, Is it getting cloudy out there? Yeah. We're holding it off though. I called in a favor. Did you? Yeah, we'll see if it works. You're tight with the man upstairs, is what you're saying? Yeah. We're so gonna get douched for sure. <laughs> is what I'm thinking. I think, I think there's gonna be now. Where's my rain jacket? I think, I think lightning's now gonna come yeah. out. We're yeah. gonna stand back a little bit. Here we go. 2245 with a six inch pack light upper, non fluted, matte black. Beautiful. Beautiful gun. Just beautiful. Um, love it. And what's the dig it out of the catalog, the weight on that. I think it's super light, like I'm not even gonna say. Oh I'm gonna go the wrong. Seven point four. Wicked. Alright, let's take that gun shooting. We will. We kind of prepped yeah. this beforehand too. We're like, hey, oh, yeah. let's take this gun, the next gun. Okay, we got a good color Same representation family. here. A little oh. bit different color. Love tactical solutions. Look at that. The blue is beautiful. Beautiful blue. That doesn't have the silver fluting in it. It has a contrasting uh, silver compensator, as you can see. Weight on that PFI. That one is. We're talking upper weight only. What length? It's a four and a half. half. Six point two. Excellent. Of course, both of these are threaded with half by twenty-eight thread. Mm -hmm. Throw on your muzzle brake. Throw on suppressor. Of which they have their own suppressor. Cool suppressors too. And they have others coming out. Stay tuned, but we'll talk about the one they have. There's a titanium this can, is the right? Cascade. Yep, that's all titanium. That's every component in there. TI. That's the Cascade TI. It's all titanium. Suppression level on that. Busting out all these details. PFI's in the catalog. Shoot, there's no yeah. weight on it. It's yeah. lightweight, I'll tell you that much, though. Oh, well, the only I thing I don't it. like about this can is that uh, you have to soak soak it to clean it. Is that yeah, right? Yeah, you do. A little mineral spirits in there. Plug okay. one in, let it soak overnight, blow it out with compressed air, get all that out of there before shooting it. I'm giving EOTech all this free publicity. They're in the background. <laughs> I hope they appreciate it. <laughs> all right. Uh, does it clean out good with Rimfire that way? Because Rimfire is such a dirty cartridge, so much fouling. And it does. Um, it's covered under warranty if somebody were to fill their one up. We don't, you know, we ask people to clean them so they're not abusing it, but it is okay. something covered under warranty. Oh, fair enough. And how long does the warranty last? It's a lifetime. Excellent. There you go. Basically, we've done a lot, of, a lot of other manufacturers. We don't have a written warning. We just say, hey, we cover our products. Yeah. And, you know, if it's not abuse or neglect, we're going to take care of you. I agree. I agree. And uh, a lot of reasons I'm really stoked about Tactical Solutions. You can bring out another pistol, bro. Uh, one, the weight. The weight yeah. is so incredibly lightweight. But another thing is there's no corners cut in the product. Do you see any? No, none at all. And if there were, I'm sorry, we'd tell you. We'd yeah. say, hey, this sucks. No, actually, actually we would never come honest. up here. <laughs> yeah, we wouldn't have been here in the first place. Dude, check that out. That's the red version. That's your own uh, grips too, right? It is. We actually do those in a partnership with Hogue. Those are good looking. They're comfortable too. I like them better than the rubber. That's, of course, the buck mark we're looking at. The trail light upper, that's a five and a half? Seven seven and that's seven and a quarter. There. Seven and a quarter. Our, the seven quarters uh, only come in non-threaded. There's OD, the OD buck mark uh, with the aluminum grips, and that's a five and a half. You said that's a five and a half thread in barrel. Five point six mm -hmm. ounces oh, for that mamma jamma. Sweet fiber optic front end. I, uh, I'm talking the sight there, guys, which I absolutely love. You can get it in your choice of green or orange. Is that right? Red, green, and orange. Okay. Um, I like the green one myself for just contrast, at least out where we're shooting, dude. Yeah, you need a little bit of contrast. Uh, they're all good, though. And I, Are you still selling them, though? The, is that an extra cost if a guy orders a ta uh, trail it lighter? Is. It is. It's, it's small. It's uh, minor, though. Yeah. Okay, and you can buy it separate. So, yes, and it's a $15 charge. Okay. To, uh, it's worth it if you ask me. I love yeah. fiber optic. Me too. Sick. All right, so there's uh, trail light, pack light. We're going to be shooting those. Excellent. Uh, they are kind of pricey. Yes. They'll basically double the price of your gun. Well done. Okay, more or less. Depends on where you're going, you know, for your dealer. Yeah. You know, which dealer and how much that dealer's going to be charging. They're not any expensive. The right. quality's there. I'm just saying. <laughs> uh, okay, cool. So, what you got now? Sick. Look at that Got thing. the internally suppressed, our lights out rifle. 
It's on the Tapco stock. We can also do them on the Hogue stock. Is that the X-ring receiver? That is the X-ring receiver. And what's the barrel? That is what we call our Sawtooth MC okay. SBR. Excellent. So you basically only have four and a half inches of bore in here. And then... Yeah. Really? Just four and a half inches of barrel in there? That's and it. This is internal suppressor? Yeah. It's just basically your free bore and your baffle stack. Of course, this one's been used quite a bit. Okay, removable baffle stack, which I totally dig. And those are made of titanium, the baffles? The baffles themselves are titanium. Okay. Nice. This thing weighs like next to nothing, too. Double tax stamp. Uh, yeah, really. That it's just an SBR it's and a an suppressor. SBR and a suppressor. So yeah. that's 400 bucks to the government. Ouch. Ouch. Cool gun. We're going to go shoot that. What do you say, PFI? Yeah. Check it out. That VG is like Painting. way too tall. Okay, Here. let's go over to the gray mat so yeah. we can see it. And then, Joe, if you could fish yep. them out, feed them to us. <clears throat> this is the LT again, right? This is, yeah, the AR LT. Basically, you got the lightweight aluminum barrel. Okay. Par with that, we got the lightweight Hogue handguard. Okay, uh, price on this MSRP on the LT upper, as shown. MSRP is $650. Of course, you'll see them street a lot less than that. That's pricey, dude. I ain't going to lie. It's a nice kit, though. All right, guys, sorry for the abrupt edit. That's the trail light, pack light uppers. I absolutely love them for your Rugers and Brownings. You're going to see a lot more of those probably in TMP. Check it though, this is what a lot of guys are very stoked about, me included, PFI included, TSG-22. Same one you saw as milling out there in the shop. Go for it, Keith. This is our Glock conversion 22 long rifle for the Glock 17-22 size frames. Right. 4140 steel slide, got a nitride finish on it. It's going to keep it durable, it's above 60 Rockwell, it's really going to wear well. Very Stand cool. for years of use. It's got a half by 28 threaded end. We also offer it in a non-threaded end. And that'll be less heavy. cost if you go non-threaded, is that right? Yeah, usually taking off, what, about $50 off the cost, Joe? And, Joe, are those those slot, those slot uh, millings on the site, or actually the rear, standard Glock? Yes, they are. So you can actually upgrade them uh, with your night sights if you wanted to. Very cool. So we can slam on those True Glow. Were you texting while we're doing this? No, nope. email. Busted. Emails. <laughs> Company emails, right? No, TMP it's customer is. emails. Just trying to keep up. <laughs> Busted. <laughs> you can throw on the true spec TFOs, tritium fiber optic. Awesome sights. Love them. And I still love those Heine straight eight tritiums. You hate them though. No, don't I know. You? I'm not a fan. Whatever. They're sick. Love you can them. Go hang out with your Heine, and I'll have my true glow. <laughs> <laughs> All right. That's a TSG 22. Uh, here's what I. This is. I haven't shot it yet. We're going to shoot it this afternoon. Hopefully, we got to book it and get it out there. Love that it's going to fit any Glock 17 frame. Yeah, it's going to fit second, the second, third, fourth. Yeah, any of the generations, one through four. Okay. It's going to fit 17, 22, 34, 35, and 37. Okay, awesome. And I like that you came out with a full size first. Mm -hmm. I know there's a lot of guys that want the Glock 19. Maybe the yeah. 26 version being made? You... I'm just going to say we haven't announced anything yet, but hold on. I think we'll see a lot more coming out here soon. Okay. Got to catch up with these first ones out the door. Yeah. Once we do that, we'll definitely look into releasing some new products. Okay, so and they have a poll on their website right now talking about, hey, which one do you want next? 26, 19, and that also, is correct. Amy just added another question, Joe, and it's... it's oh, you definitely got to go on there and vote. It's whether PFI is going to run in pink tights for the Ironman competition. I, yeah, spandex. <laughs> and texting while he does it. Busted. Yeah, with so the we'll pink get, bandana. Yeah, too. so we'll add that Tactical question. Two, two. Of course, we're just kidding. Uh, we're running out of time for part one. Uh, here's another thing, TSG-22, we're going to find out, and, and you probably already know, you guys have shot thousands and thousands. Is it reliable? If, it is. If it's reliable, then I think it, it's probably worth the money, and it's not cheap, dude. No, great. The MSRP on that, Joe, 375 Four, for non-threaded? 430 for the uh, threaded end. Okay. That's MSRP. Street's going to be a lot lower. It is. Depending on which dealer you go to. Correct. Yeah. Okay. Oh, forgot to say this. PFI, talk about the magazine. I love the mag. 15 rounds, solid mag, super durable, and I'm excited to get out and run it. Way easy to I load, would, too. They got oh, yeah. tabs on, on both the, sides. Both sides, super easy. 15 rounds. I would buy this just for the mag. I'm tired of cheesy mags and conversions, and that one looks like it's rock solid. And so. every other convert, not every, but most conversions out there, you don't have loading tabs. It's just kind of a And pain you don't have 15 rounds. Exactly. It will stick out the bottom a little bit. It key. will. Um, this one's loaded, so it's yeah. going to be about like that. 
I like that. You know, the thing with this conversion is too, we spent a lot of time redesigning this magazine and making it. I mean, there was about six, you know, what we thought were final versions of it. Mm -hmm. But a semi-auto pistol is only as good as its magazine or any semi-auto gun. Exactly. All right, so uh, threaded, I love it. Oh, and by the way, just to make sure Tactical Solutions hasn't gamed it and like fine-tuned a pistol for us, we're gonna throw a little surprise at you right now. We're gonna take off your slide from your gun and throw it on my third gen OD. All right. You up for that? I'm up for it. Here we go, breaking into the nothing fancy gun case that we traveled with on the airline. Throw out that, there we go. Show them how easy it is. That's my third gen Glock OD. You've seen it lots in the project. This Beautiful. one's gonna come off. Discontinued color. I know. Do you like that color too? I do. Love that. I wish they wouldn't have discontinued it, but. I know. I think it may be coming back from the way they were talking at shop. Really? Mm -hmm. They're getting a lot of requests for it. But it, they said while they were making it, poor seller. Really? Go figure. Hmm. Whoa, in the meantime, he totally slammed that on there. So it's gonna be a piece of cake throwing it on there. We're gonna see how it shoots. Let's do it. There you go. By the way, totally out of time. That is part uh, one. Tactical Solutions, Boise, Idaho. There's Keith. Part CEO of the company, awesome host. Joe, awesome host. He's busted. Texting. <laughs> totally Customer busted. Email. PFI email. dude, nothing fancy. Come on back for part two. We're going to go out. Uh, we're going to talk about these rifles and we're going to uh, shoot. Let's go shoot. Roger that. by looking at oh, it. It's a smooth run of machine, dude. Here, try it.